Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome to another Beekeeping Basics. It's hard to believe that today is uh, mid-January. It's the 16th of January. The sun is really bright and incredibly warm and I've just come over to one of the apiaries to put the pollen patties on that I processed at the weekend and the bees are out flying and the colonies are really busy and they're all looking um, pretty good. So I thought um, I should mention that if uh, you happen to find a day in the middle of winter when the sun is nice and warm and uh, the bees are out flying you might be tempted to take the top off the hive and try and do a full inspection and I would warn against that I think it's still too much of a, a chilly day there's still a chill in the air it's only about uh, seven or eight degrees and it's possible that you might think that because of the warmth that's in the Sun that it's okay to do a full inspection but what you have to remember is that once you've split open the brood nest the bees that are on those frames are going to chill very quickly and if there's a bit of a breeze blowing which there is uh, the brood nest is going to cool down rapidly and when you put the frames back together again they're going to have to work incredibly hard to build up that temperature before the sun drops below the horizon and the temperature really starts to fall again and if you have a very cold night you could end up killing your bees so I would just warn against doing any kind of proper inspections until we get into the spring uh, which would be March or April so what I'm going to do today is to suit up and go over to one or two of the colonies and put the uh, slabs of pollen substitute that I made on, onto the brood bars and uh, I've also got some fondant to put on one or two colonies that I think might be getting a little bit low so I'll suit up and then we'll go over and do that so a word of caution if you're still treating with oxalic acid and you're keeping the oxalic acid in your flask make sure that when you do go out to treat that you don't um, get the wrong flask and come out of the house with the wrong flask okay so I'm suited up and we're now going to get into one of the colonies and put one of the pollen slabs onto it um, so this is pollen substitute and we're going to pop it under the crown board uh, straight on top of the brood frames so we've still got all of the chicken wire on the colonies to prevent woodpeckers from causing any damage so we'll just pop that off and here's the pollen patty and what I'm going to do is just scrape a hole in the top here and peel it back so now the bees can get into that like so okay so we're ready to go top off and I can see there are seams of bees down here so we're just going to take this and lay it on top and the bees can now get up into that and they'll have plenty of pollen substitute and uh, some extra stores there for them as well and the crown board fits nicely back on top so it doesn't cause us any problems okay that's it we'll move on and uh, do the next one not forgetting to put the chicken wire back around the hive well, it's just worth seeing how busy these bees are so a lot of these bees are going out on cleansing flights it's the 16th of January the Sun's out and the bees are just orientating themselves to where the hive is some of these bees might not have flown before so they're working out where their home is and a lot of them are going off and having a bit of a toilet break and then they'll come back and reform the cluster once the sun has dropped down and the temperature drops again so 
Let me just show you another one. Just drop the chicken wire down. Lift the lid. Lots of bees here. Lid back on. That's another one done. With minimal interference with bees and we're not breaking the cluster and dropping the core temperature of the hive, which is really important at this time of year. So that's all the pollen patties put onto the beehives. It's probably a little bit earlier than I would normally do it, but I wanted to do it in order that I could post a video and show you what I'm doing. So we'll come back in a week, 10 days, and have another look and see how well they've taken down that um, pollen. The thing with these colonies now is that I'm gonna have to continue to feed them so that they don't end up starving. The brood nests are going to expand. If we're giving them pollen, then hopefully the queen's going to start laying more eggs because they'll have the food stores there for the larvae. And if I suddenly stop, then the whole colony could collapse. So I'm only putting the pollen substitute on at one apiary this early, and I'll normally wait until we're into February before I really increase the pollen substitute feeding. I hope you found that interesting. Please do hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the like button also, and we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching.